Alright chat, let's move on then. Um, next up should be, let's do Divcon Heroes. So, the other one. Which is a Platinum Monkey Ryan. Um, I really want to work on my Monkey and Reinhardt. I feel the thing I need to work on the most on Monkey is my positioning. Just not too sure where to be and I only play Ryan for a round or so. I'm not entirely sure what I can work on. I'm sure there's something, any tips are appreciated. Let's just copy and get right into it. There we go. So, Anubis. Anubis is a pretty fun monkey map. Second, it's not that good, but other than that, it should be fine. So, we're looking at Divcon. Oh, Divcon, just not Divcon Heroes. Uh, there you go. So we're going to attack. Monkey is, I don't want to say pretty simple, um, but you've got one main job with Monkey, which is distract the enemy. you got to keep in mind that you don't have any range healing, so it's very likely you're going to, ha you are going to have to go back to your Moira uh, to get that healing. Usually what you want to do with Monkey is, okay, that bubble is really flat from Australia, uh, because you're not jumping in yet, and you will not have a bubble by the time you go in, but that's fine. Uh, you should not do that. You know what? I was going to say you should not do that because you don't want to be, take poke damage, but I'm okay with it because you have the gyro bubble, right? You just gave your Sarah some energy. Um, okay. Anywho, the big thing is definitely you need to go from like being in cover to go in really, really quick. Usually try to uh, target the backline. In this case, like you could go for the Mercy, you could go for the Ash, you could try to go for the Ana. It depends on how far you can get. Um, they have a junk rat, so it's not ideal, but you could always try to take the high ground, then jump in, or just the usual walk to the arc and then jump in and try to get like the mercy, then drop behind them or that way, or get out that way and jump for the raid, right? Uh, too long, didn't read, you don't want to take poke damage. Like, this is already bad. You jumping into that junk rat mine and taking like 100 damage means that you can stay for that much shorter when you go in. I think you're waiting for healing, I think you're waiting for your Saga Bubble, which is good. But you've basically done nothing in like 10 seconds now. So you get a little healed. Oh, now you got a Mo uh, you don't longer have a Moira, you have a Sun now. Which is okay, you're probably going to take a lot of damage. But that, that's fine. You've got some range healing. You're jumping the Saga, this is not your target. Don't go for Saga. Like, go for the Mercy or just try to take the high ground and then go further in. Going at the Saria is not gonna get you anywhere. You are not gonna kill the Saria alone. And your follow up is dead as well. So it's like, don't go at Saria. Like, the idea is decent. Like, jump someone isolated with the bubble. Saria is just the wrong target. You should be trying to go for. Even the Mercy, I'm okay with. But ideally, like, you see the Ana shooting from up here. This should be your target. Okay. So, but we do get the kill. Um, There's the follow up. You take some damage, so you back out, and you use cover, and you that sounds pretty good, right? Overall, I think you did pretty good. You, like, created some space. Wasn't the best ID, the best target. Oh, that was pretty good. Second like roll. It's not a roll. It's probably because monkeys are harder to play on second. Go get the Ana. Great job. Just kill the Ana. Now you just drop on the point and bubble the Ryan and kill him. Okay. Solid. First point overall, solid. A couple of things to improve on, don't take poke damage, don't jump at the wrong targets like Saria. Saria is not always the wrong target by the way, but if she's got a bubble, definitely, if she's got a mercy pocket, most likely. He was the jump on the high ground, which is unfortunate. You don't need this many, so you just hide. Now they've got the monkey. And again, your biggest concern should be, you don't have a lot of healing. So you've got to be really careful on your engages, because you can just get deleted otherwise. Like you're standing in the... why are you just standing here, right? This is not what you do, you don't just stand here. Uh, you don't walk out. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you could just take a step back here and try to jump above this. By aiming up and then landing that way, but... This is a much better target for your engagement, right? You go on the, uh, on the Ash, you go on the Ana. You did take more damage than I would have liked before the engagement, like you took almost 100 damage. But this is not too bad. 
And you're playing very carefully, because you're, you are definitely gonna have to get out. You don't need to jump there yet, which is important, but you do know how to get out, which is good. I feel like overall the biggest thing is that you're just not fully committed at this game, at this point. Like, you have almost 400 health when you jump out, right? That's why I said you don't have to jump out, you can just stay here. You are not being pressured either. Um, you can just stay here, you are at 400 health, you go back up, right? Do some damage and when you get pressured again, then you can jump out. But again, it's difficult to play attack monkey on second. Um, the biggest reason is that you don't really have a good, a great session point. You can maybe use this, but it's as good as it gets. Now you've taken some damage and now you should just stop being in the open, wait a little bit. Good engagement though. Yeah, good engagement. And that's how it's fight. Let's get out, yeah. So, what's the big thing thus far? I think that you're just not staying enough. The fact that you haven't had Primal yet is really telling, right? Like, um, it's been, what, two and a half minutes and we don't have Primal yet? You're just not staying long enough. I, which, I, I get it, you're concerned because you don't have enough healing. But when you have 400 health and jump, just, just do a little more damage. Um, also, go get the Mega. Like, all of this time... All of this time... Right? You could have just gone get the Mega. Your supports already have ultimate. Your team is respawning. Just go get the Mega and come back. Your supports don't need this healing. So... You should gonna be your objective, probably this, probably this, right? Those are your type targets. And now you've got even more follow-up, so it could be really good. It could be really good. You just need to make sure that maybe you clear the cycle, right? Maybe you clear the monkey so you can engage from the high Um That's, I like this, like this is not bad, just, just clear the monkey out. Why, are we, you have 70 shot, 70 um, why are you reloading? Okay, two, kids, two very quick things. You have done no damage to this monkey, because you keep reloading. Also, when you're playing against tanks, and this is just going to be a really quick thing, um, you should weave in melee between your shots, because armor reduces your damage drastically, right? Let me just get like a monkey out here. So if you're doing a monkey and you just hold the left click, it doesn't do a lot of damage, like the armor blocks most of your damage. Right? And it will take like f two full clips to kill a monkey. So it's just not that good. Um, however, if you just weave in some melee, you get the same DPS, the exact same DPS, uh, but because you can melee and burst the armor down more quickly, it takes like a single clip to kill them. Yeah, your damage is not quite literally half, um, but like the fact that melee helps you break armor faster will help you kill them faster and also like. Um, <clears throat> conserve your ammo because you don't have to lose the reload time either and the damage is quite literally the same by the way monkey does 60 damage per second and melee does 30 so even if you lose half of your time shooting you gain the 30 melee from dam the 30 damage from melee yes you lose the cleave but when you are uh, when you are on a 1v1 fight like you just were cleave is not that important right you are just 1v1 so when you're building a tank like that, all you want to really do is make sure you are weaving in those melees to... Oh wow, that's already defense. Oh, this is like a 12 CP game, huh? Uh, but yeah, the children already is... Uh, let's go back one. You don't have Primal yet, so probably this one. Yeah, should have a good time, I just forgot. Like, the fact that you're reloading so much, every time every, uh, worse. every time you reload, you are losing damage you could be doing. Um, and also, you are not melling. So you're basically doing like, look how much damage you do to this monkey. You use 30 of your ammo. That monkey has taken 40 damage. And then you just reload. Instead of just chasing the monkey and forcing him out, you got full HP, you got your bubble, you got primal, just chase the monkey out. Take control of the position, do more damage to him than he's, sorry, he's doing to you, right? 
Bubble here is fine, even though you're... It's not ideal, like, of course, it's not gonna block the monkey damage, but maybe you were worried about, like, the Ash. Um, I would not have used it, because then you can... When you go in further, you're not gonna have it, but you can, you got Primal, so it's okay. If you did not have Primal, using this bubble here would be throwing. That's not a play for every engagement as monkey, should you always pepper in melee? So, yes and no. If you got one single enemy, yes, like always. Uh, because against a single enemy, using melee helps you burst an armor and conserve your ammo, and the DPS is the same. So if you're only going against one target, melee is better. Um, if you got multiple targets, so like if you're engaging, like let's say here, and you are hitting like these three people, you don't want to melee uh, because you know you can do three times the damage. So instead of doing like 60 per second, you are doing 180 per second, and losing half of this to melee makes means you're only doing 120, not the same damage. So if you're going on a 1v1, especially against tanks, you want to melee. If you're going at multiple people, you probably are better off just cleaving. But when you are playing a 1v1 like this, it's very important that you throw in some melees. It will also help you burn the armor down faster because it reduces your damage less. Okay, but your treasure just gets a kill. That's pretty good. You jump in, you hit your head against the, the sky box, which is... Not terrible, but not great. This is what I meant when I said that not having the bubble could be a problem. Uh, your tracer doesn't have a place to play in, but it's still okay. You primal way too early. Like, look at your health. 444? Why are you primaling right now? 450? 460? Again, the biggest thing with you've got with monkey is balancing how much you can stay in the enemy team, right? How much you can do damage, pressure them, get their resources out. And using Primal at basically full health is giving away, like, a lot of time you could be in. I, I think you make up anyway. You got the Ash, the Mercy and Diana are in a bad position. Your Tracer is going in. We got Copy and Vogue. So we have a really big, uh, a really big, uh, a really big advantage. Um... But definitely not the right time to Primal. Because you just didn't need it. You get slapped. But you do kill. You kill two actually. What I'm saying, that's pretty cool. Uh, but still, like, it, it's mostly just a, a waste of Primal. You are still gonna win the fight, though. Like, I can definitely tell you're just gonna win this fight at this point. Uh, focus with the right people. You, you know about melee. You're just not doing it. You were just not doing it earlier. You should be doing it. But the biggest thing is definitely you need to balance more how much you can stay against when you need to go out. Right? Um, with Monkey, the goal of Monkey is Monkey is not someone who can kill people, right? He does 60 damage per second. Um, his ultimate has like 70 per swing as well. He's not a very high damage dealer. But your goal is like do enough damage to enable your DPS. And you can provide a lot of staying power, right? Uh, you can stay for a very long time as Monkey, depending on your team, your healing, how good you are at mash, at like shield dancing or whatnot. But you can stay for like a full four seconds before you have to jump out. Um, mashing your health is also very important. So it's a matter of making sure you stay for as long as you can and get all the value you can get before you have to jump out. Because if the enemies are focusing on you and using the resources on you, then your DPS are free to do whatever they want. That's basically how Monkey works. Yeah, he's got he's got a totem. Yeah, he does. He does really bad damage. Like Moira does more damage than Monkey. Okay, I Bob just kills two people, which is not that good. Imagine if we had Primal to just boop the Bob off point. We could have definitely have won this fight. We just didn't. That was definitely the time to just get out completely. Don't stay, just get out. This is a... Why are you jumping back in? One, two, three, four, five. And yeah, your DPS are still in, but your Echo's about to die. And Tracer by herself is not gonna do a lot. Right? Like, probably not the right time to engage. 
Your DPS are popping off though, like they are getting kills left and right. But yeah, this is this should be a lost fight at least. Your again, your DPS are just popping off. You got crab, we're assumed to have primal. You should have just stood on this on the mini, you're missing like all of your armor, so you're gonna engage without most of your armor. Like you jumping at 400 health, you could have had 75 more. The engagement, your engagements have been pretty good. I, I'm more worried about the time. Um, that was about the primal two, you were at 200. But I'm more worried about the, the times where you're just not staying for as long as you could. You missed the jump though, and you're not doing a lot. But we grab them off the point and win. So, thus far, and it's only been one round of what I imagine is at least three or four. Um, I think the biggest thing is you're just not managing your uh, your aggression against your ability to stay in for a long time, right? Monkey can stay in for a long time. Yes, there's a lot of burst damage in the game, but especially when you have like a Saria, a Diva, you don't have to bubble early if you have either of those because you're very likely to get the bubble, get the defense matrix, so you can jump in. Um, stay for like one or two seconds with the bubble, pop your own bubble, shield and throw a little bit, then get out. And your health is a resource too. So it's a matter of balancing everything to get as much value as you can with Monkey. And then get out alive, right? Uh, and it's dangerous because yeah, you can get burst down and killed if you stay for too long. But if you stay, if you don't stay long enough, then your DPS are gonna struggle to get the same amount of value. So... It's a very fun line. Monkey's a very... Monkey's a very difficult hero to play, I'll say that. Even though he's basically just jump in, auto-aim, get out, he's a very difficult hero to play because of that. You need to engage at the right time, on the right target, um, make sure you are not only using your bubble for survival, but that it's also isolating the enemy, um, giving your DPS place to play in, right? There's a lot of nuance to playing Monkey. It's not just, I play Monkey, I jump in, lol. Also, this is a bad starting position. Like, good starting positions are here. So you can just drop at the enemy. Here on this corner. Like, right here. So that if the enemy comes forward, you can just walk out and sub them, right? Um, I would say those are the two best positions. Ideally, if you start here, you go disengagement, right? You just drop on them. You drop on them or walk at them. And if they come this way, you can jump in and then get out, right? Um, this is just not a good position to start as a monkey. You don't want to be here. You want to jump in here if you have to. But the big thing is that you're just letting them get this for free at this point. Like, to engage to, on them, if they do this, you've got to jump in, which is just really, really bad. If you were here, when they do this, you can walk forward and sub them. And get some ult charge and do some damage. And maybe while they are focused on you, your DPS can go in, right? Or if you were playing here... You can do the same either that way or this way. Right? It's a matter of being able to do everything. And right now you can't do everything. Like from here, you can control this, this, and you can jump in. This is a kill box, right? Um, this is where you want to take the fight if they come this way. By just jump again. And just being here is not enough because you are not about holding chokes. Monkey is not good at holding chokes. Like if they have a Reinhardt and the, and, the, and the Mei on top of that, and they come through the choke, they are going to win this choke. Monkey is not enough to hold the choke. Monkey is about kill boxes. Like Ryan is about chokes. Monkey is about kill boxes. In this case, this is your kill box, right? Um, and it does really need a little coordination from your team, but this, the, basically the idea is that if the enemy is here, from here you can engage them, and all of your DPS and supports can get line of sight over here and do good, right? Uh, in this case, everyone is here, which is just bad, but. Um, no, you shouldn't be. Uh, like, if your son was playing here, or you're, let's say you have an Ana, right? Ana is playing from here. She can shoot this way, she can shoot this way, and she can rotate that way if we have need an engagement over here or over here, right? Um, and Ana can get here, and then I can get this or this if you are playing here or here. Um, <clears throat> but also, like, if they come this way, you don't really have a great way of killing them from here. You can do some damage, but it's not gonna be enough. Like, are you just gonna jump at them? Are you just gonna stay here forever? 
Because Monk is not about holding, right? Monk is about going aggressive. It's not your job to do this Monk. Your job is like... Uh, you either have to drop on them early and get some value before they teleported. Go in that way if you were that. Sub them before they teleport. Don't go indoors. Like, never go indoors. Just stay here and sub them and then you can jump out. Or drop and then you can jump out or back up. Never go indoors with Monkey. Never. Like, there's nuances to everything, but... Don't go indoors if you can avoid that. This jump is really bad. Because again, even if you get bubbled, which you may, like Saria should be bubbling you. She doesn't, but she should be. She's speaking to bubble you. Okay, well, we end up stacking bubbles, which is really, really bad. Um, but this is just not a good jump because you're basically just jumping into their team. And it's like, well, what can your team do to help you here? Let's look at it this way, right? Remember how I said that this is a kill box? Because no matter where your team is set up, they can kind of get there. This is, the point can be a kill box if you are set up correctly. But in this case, your team is not really set up correctly. This may still be a one fight and I will eat my words. Uh, but like, you're just jumping into the front line, right? You, you can't choose your target. You can't choose who to go on. You can't try to force resources out of them earlier either. Um, it's just, you're just jumping in. You're like, oh, they're on the point. I need to jump in. And that's what you're doing. And you just jump in and you're like, oh, what, what do I get? The Lucio? Okay, I'll try to get the Lucio. But you've got like five people on the point. And you pop bubble because you're taking damage, but your own Saria uses her bubble. And it just stacks with your bubble, which is really, really bad. You don't want to stack bubbles. Because remember, that, remember what I said earlier? You want to jump in, get bubbled, last for like one or two seconds with this bubble. Then use your own bubble and you can maybe buy four seconds of time. And then jump out. In this case, you basically jumped in and last two seconds, and you're just gonna have to get out. Like, you stay for a little longer, which is impressive, but you're just gonna have to get out. Your Doomfish is a lot of damage, sir. Your DPS are getting a lot of work here. You try to save your Mercy, but it's probably too late. You, you could have melee the turret. Yeah. You end up by yourself, right? You don't manage to. Have a good engagement. That is basically b just on where you set up. All of that, that was just really bad based on where you set up. And we still won the fight because your DPS is honestly kind of crap. Like, I would not be surprised if this Stunfish was a smurf. I don't be surprised if the Echo was a smurf, but the Echo is not getting as much free value. Sorry, why is it not taking me? Oh, it is taking me too. There we go. Um, Miracle is probably not a smurf, but your Stunfish feels like a smurf. Especially on Tracer. Anywho. Smurf or not, doesn't matter. Your DPS are getting a ton of value. So you need to be enabling them, right? That's your job as Monk. You enable the DPS. You create a safe space for them to work on. And that safe space is not just by standing here and jumping on the point. And this is also not that good. But I think you got the right idea. Um, on this one at least. It's like... My Echo is here, if I go in, I can maybe create some distance, right? I don't like it because, again, it's like... No one in your team can really see you over here. So you're basically by yourself once more. Um, but I like the idea of... Maybe, of course, your Echo can see you, but no one else. I like the idea of you just go in, try to bubble, help your Echo out, but... No. You just need to be... If you're confident that you can survive for, like, the... Five to six seconds it's gonna take for you to get your your jump back. You can do this. In this case, I would not have been confident because the whole enemy team is here. Um, like I would not be surprised if you just die here. Yeah. So it's basically like, what can you do to avoid this? Well, the first thing is definitely just jump higher. Like rather than doing this arc, you can aim for like a very tall arc. Because your um, cooldown is reset when you press the button. Right, you can see that it's already going. It doesn't uh, reset when you land. So by going for a longer for a longer jump, um, you can do that. Um, <clears throat> get an extra second, maybe even two if you're really good and you can like slide around and then land. But it, you can get at least one extra second of time just by jumping really long instead of just jumping directly in. 
But basically, this is suicidal to a degree. I don't hate it. That's really weird. I don't hate it, but I do think that you are overextending. Because your team just cannot help you here. So if we lose this fight, which is losing like May, it's definitely on you. If we win this fight, it's on your team, because your DPS are just doing a lot of work. They're coming back. Shoot back, kitty cat. Now, just, just... Jump up of this, and then you can just jump back that way and get the high ground. Like, the way you're coming back is not terrible, it's not very slow or anything. But if you can just, like, hold on, let's go back. If you want to come back basically as fast as you want to and have an advantage, like that jump is okay, but you've got to be like, I jump here, jump here, jump here, and then you can jump from here to the high ground and you got the high ground, which is a big advantage. The, the way you're coming back is not going to give you that advantage. Like it's basically just as fast, uh, but it's, oh, you're going for the high ground anyway. You just missed actually, uh, but you took an extra jump there basically then. Like, imagine if instead of doing this, you just drop from the high ground. Isn't that, is it a big of a deal? No, but you can choose who to go on. Like, if you walk this way, you don't have that choice. It's like, this guy on my face. If you drop from here, you can be like, okay, I'm going to drop this way, come this way, I'm going to drop this way, go for the Ana, right? I'm going to jump and try to land above them, and maybe here, or maybe just jump around the Reinhardt and go for the Ana or the Farah. Choice is very important. Like, you still go for the Ana, by the way. Good target priority. There, at least. Um, you do still go for the eye, which is very important, but you could have enabled yourself a lot more. I'm okay, I'm okay with this primal because your team is trying to contest. I think the fight is lost anyway, but your team is trying really hard to recontest this, so I'm okay with it. You're just trying to stay alive for longer on the point. And yeah, the idea of jumping up and down to avoid damage is good. You should have bubbled almost immediately. You don't, like, your team doesn't have a lot of feeling, you should go for the Mega. That was a bad jump. Really good beat though, like, your Echo copying Lucio instead of a DPS or a tank may actually save this fight. Yeah, it may actually save this fight because of beat. Good engagement, like, good follow up on the Ana. So you're not doing terrible, but you could be doing a lot better if you just Stayed on for a little longer and knew how to actually take those engagements, right? The idea of Monkey is not just, I jump into the enemy and I try to kill them, is Well, I'm gonna like take the high ground, choose how to go on, try to engage without my cooldown if I can. And it's not about you. That's the biggest thing with Monkey. It's never about you. It's about creating as much space and time as you can uh, for your DPS to get value. And in this case, your DPS are cracked. So you should definitely be coordinating with them and trying to get value for them. Good dodge on the hook, but again, you should not be playing here. Like, what what advantages do you get here? Like, be other than just letting them shoot at you for free. You should be here, you could be here where they cannot actually shoot you. You can walk at them, right? Those are, I think, the best positions on this map. Bridge is okay if they got no way to get to bridge. In this case, they got, like, a lot of ways to get to bridge. So you should be careful. And this is, again... Very, very, very risky. You are engaging by yourself against four people. That's not how Monkey works. Monkey is not a solo tank. In fact, he's like the second most team-focused tank in the game. It's like, Ryan, then Monkey. So you should not be taking these engagements by yourself. This is really bad. I'll, be not, I'll not be surprised if you just die here outright. Um, because again, like, unless your Sarah gets like the best bubble of all time around the corner at you, uh, you're probably just dead. But like I said, your Sarah got a very good bubble, and that's the only reason you get out. Uh, because they burst that bubble and immediately, and you could have died very easily without that bubble. Like, you would have died without that bubble. So your Sarah saved your ass, and that was a really bad engagement. Why are you jumping here again? Like, Farah's not your best target. Farah is not even a good target for you, she's got so much mobility, she can just go away. 
Like, ideally, you want to go for targets without mobility. Even, like, Rodo can be okay if you got, like, a 3 score door and so many of your DPS are going for him. It's, he's still not a priority. Like, your priority is clearly just Terana. I also engage him without bubble, which is not that good. And the biggest reason for that is you just went balls deep into their backline and almost died for it. And use all of your cooldowns. Let's fight by the way. Just on the point. Do not use primal. Like on the last one, your whole team was trying to recontest and we use ultimates. On this one, your whole team is dead, right? Like you are literally by yourself. The people who are alive are your Syracus here escaping and no one else. So do not primal this one. In fact, are you even gonna touch? You are not even gonna touch. Okay, I'm fine with that. You should have died on the point because yeah, your Sire is gonna die anyway. Uh, so it's really good to just regroup. But it's fine. Oh, they beat and push forward. They are trying to snowball. Bubble is fine. Pop primal, like why now? Your team is coming back from spawn. You got like four people coming back from spawn. Just pop primal. Because if you die here, it's just a lost fight. Just pop the primal. Okay, good job. You pop primal. Fire is not your target. For, go for the Rana. Like, the Rana is right here and she did not even get B. Maybe she did get B and they were, it already won off, but... Um, she's your better target. Rather than... You went all the way back for this Farah and it's like... You should not have. Your Hansu just killed her immediately. And we got Transcendence up. Instead of making space for your team, you just tried to chase a single Farah and did nothing. I feel like, elementally, the big thing here is you just don't understand how Monkey works, which is kind of okay. I'm not going to berate you for not knowing. Like, you're a plot player. You are not supposed to know all of the um, Monkey secrets, right? But Monkey is a hero that, uh, basically, let's think about, you don't have any of them right now, but let's think about, like, a Tracer, like you had on the first one, right? What is Tracer's big bro? Tracer can do a ton of damage. What's their big of weakness? Tracer has very low HP and she can't stay in for a long time. Monkey is basically the opposite, right? Monkey can go in and stay for like 4 or 5 seconds. Especially if you get like a Saria Bubble or a Diva Defense Matrix. And you will take the attention of the enemy because you are just creating space. You can put a bubble down for the Tracer to play in, right? This is why Tracer places pairs in so well uh, with dive tanks. Because you can give Tracer the same power she doesn't have by using your bubble, distracting the enemy, forcing cooldowns out. And Tracer can give you the damage you don't have, right? Between Tracer and Monkey or Tracer and Wrecking Ball, it's like a really good combination for that. Anywho, yeah, this is really good. This is the right position. Just play here. On the second point, there are not that many. Why are you jumping in? Two mistakes there. Two mistakes there. Not a single mistake. Actually, three mistakes. Um, but two big ones, right? The first one, you are going where your team cannot see you again. And this is a, something you should definitely work on. If you're going to play monkey, you should play monkey in an area where your team can see you. Like, your Hanzo can do this. Your Hanzo can do this and this. Your monkey is kind of going for the flank, but not yet. Um, I don't think know if he's actually going for the flank even. He's just watching the flank. And it's like you're jumping in and no one in your team can help you. Literally no one. And this is like the third or fourth time you're doing this. Instead, what you should do is you should... Shut, and that's the first mistake. Like, again, you're engaging in an area where your team cannot see you. And the second thing is you're jumping in. You should not be jumping in. You should use the fact that you've got the high ground and drop on them. Literally just walk off the high ground, drop on them. And the big advantage is that um, you can just jump out. Immediately, like as soon as you need it, you can just press the jump button and get out. Hello. Rather than having to wait again six seconds or five seconds to get out, you can just drop from the high ground. And this is why high ground is so good with dive tanks. Um, you can just drop, do what your thing, and then jump out as soon as you think you're in danger, right? I will be surprised if you don't die here. Maybe your whole team, yeah, the whole team just ignores you. Uh, because you actually didn't have a good engagement either, which is what I was going to say was the third thing. Your engagement was definitely off-timing, like, they already go through the choke. 
Like you can in theory just play here. Probably just uh, and be like if they go that way you can drop, get some value and then just jump out. When they get through this choke. But you just fucked it up and went the other way instead. But you should drop here. Then you can jump out that way, jump out that way. Because the big thing with monkeys is that you can do cleave damage when they're coming through a tight hallway. Tight hallway, right? But it's kind of fucked it up, I'll be honest. And now you're basically frontlining against Reaper, Rothog, and Reinhardt, which is just death for you. Monkey's not really a frontline deck. Like, that idea is good, but even here it's like, uh, you're jumping in because you have to, and you don't even target the backline. You just jump into the front line. Like, look at this. When you jump in, you just jump in, and you're like, I need to go, I'm gonna go, and I'm just gonna jump, and it's like, you land on top of the Reinhardt, right? If you just aim higher, and hold spacebar when you land, you can do this. Doink, doink. And go like all the way onto on top of the Rana. You still kind of get to run a little bit, but you basically just land on the Rana. Which is just not good. And then you just probably get deleted because you're not a frontline tank. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully this is like giving you some insight on how to tweak your monkey playstyle a little bit. Because I, I think you got a lot of potential. I honestly think you got like a lot of potential. Uh, you just need to make sure you're getting enough value and mostly that means make sure your team can see the, where you are playing. Like the area that you're playing is very important because you are not a solo tank. Like D.Va can play by herself. Sigma, uh, Rothog, Wrecking Ball even can all kind of play by themselves. With Monkey you cannot play by yourself. When Monkey nor Reinhardt can play by themselves. Again, not the best position to hold. Uh, you should be probably here, probably here. They're both really good. Like, imagine if you were here, right? That I'm going to make this point. I keep saying, you don't front on this Monkey, but going in and getting some cliff damage, charging your Primal. Primal is definitely your biggest thing. Is Well, you can go in and stay for even longer with Primal. So charging Primal is really important. You could go in, do some cleave damage, get like 20 or 30% to primal. And the big thing is that you are not frontlining, you're just farming them. And when they try to go on you or you think you need to get out, you have jump immediately available to get out. Which is also why um, dive can be really, really good on defenses sometimes, rather than offenses. Uh, but again, depending on the map, it depends on the map. Uh, like you should have done this thing you're doing now when you were over there. The problem is that you don't really have a place to jump out to now, right? If you farm them a little bit here, then jumped out, your cooldown will have been back and you could have engaged here. Um, but now you're just like frontlining in front of your Reinhardt even. Like if you have a Reinhardt, let your Reinhardt do the thing. That's a little bit feedy from your Reinhardt, but that's not your problem. And you, this is the problem. Just walk up to them. Just literally walk up to them. They are all turning around to deal with your Reinhardt. Your Reinhardt is probably dead anyway, he got untied, but you could just walk up, do some sapping, and they have the chance to jump out. You've used all of your cooldowns now, and you've got no way out. You're just dead. Like, there is no way you survive this. Okay. So again, it comes down to... You mostly maybe not knowing how monkey works. The idea of you've got to go in but let yourself get out as well. If you don't manage to get out, you're probably throwing. At least that fight. You, I'm okay with you going back in here, farm the primal. Um, try to isolate. It's a fight, like for sure, but... Uh, go for the mega. Go for the mega. If you need healing and you're jumping in with 100 HP, it's like, you're just gonna die. Just go for the Mega. Yeah. If you really try to, you know, uh, recontest that, you should come for the Mega. If you are just trying to farm your ultimate, you should have come for the Mega, so you can come back and farm a little more. Again, Monk is about balancing how long you can stay against when you need to get out, and how much value you get. 
If you stay too long, you're throwing. If you go out too early, you're throwing. And that's the hardest part with Monkey. And again, you've got a lot of engagements on the front line or just overextensions. But I think the biggest thing is definitely understanding that with Monkey, you are not like the main player. It's not about you. And you may see like Fearless and stuff like that. That they, like Fearless is an insane Monkey. But even then, it's not like Fearless carries his team. Fearless is just another part in the cog. But because he's so good, he manages to get a lot of uh, final blows. His team is really good at helping him isolate people and do a ton of damage. So it takes like a lot to have a really good monkey. And it, it is all about balancing that, how much damage and how much value you can get against how long you can stay. And Fearless can stay for very long because between his team and all of that, he can stay for very long, get out and re-engage really fast too. Anywho, like this is a good engagement, you just kill the Saria and you kill the Rana, right? We should not have used play, but it's okay. You got beat out. Don't jump to Reinhardt. But this is just a one fight. That's actually good for us. He wasted an ultimate. He was by himself. That's actually good for us. Don't stand here though. Like this is what I'm telling you to avoid. You should go here, maybe here, to stab them when they come in and then jump out. Or just take the high ground, which is the best position. Like, look at how much damage you're taking just by being here, and you've done nothing. Quite literally nothing. You jump behind them, try to get the Ana maybe? Um, but, like, what's this jump? What's your goal when making this jump? If you're going for Diana, you want to farm. If you're just jumping in behind them because you think it's gonna be good, then you're just kinda not doing that. Like, you are not jumping Diana very clearly. You are jumping the Roadhog even. If you were trying to go for Diana, you just missed by a mile. You should probably Primal. You should probably Primal. You should definitely Primal. Okay, you must get Primal. And I'm not going to go too deep into Primal mechanic. What? What are you doing? No! That's throwing! That's actually the first time like, you are actually throwing. Why? You've got 600 HP. When Primal ends, you are gonna be at 500 anyway. No matter how much HP you got. Just jump in and help your team. We use mines. You could go behind them and boop them into the mines. This is the first time I'm actually mad. That's throwing. I think your team gets it anyway, but oh my god. Okay. And this should just be clean up. Okay, so how far am I going? 15 minutes? I'm going to show you a couple things that may help you with getting to the right target because you missed the Ana by a lot there. Um, <clears throat> so just a couple, of, uh, a couple of pointers that will help your engagement, like I said earlier. If you, like, what's the easiest way? Let me just put, like, a marker. If you get somewhere around there, right? You need to get somewhere to that banana. And you're here, you have several ways of doing that. You can short jump, then jump again, right? Because when you land, if you hold the space bar, and I will show you this, um, if you just jump, you can get to the banana and land, right? You don't have to keep going. But if you jump and hold space bar when you land, you can get that little extra few meters from the momentum. But anywho, forget about that. There are several ways to get to this banana. Like I showed you earlier, you can just jump to the banana, right? That's a normal jump, not holding any button. You can jump with the S key, which will be a shorter jump, right? And then just place part two in. Right? That's a shorter jump. There are basically three things that affect the jump. And I will name them later. Um, you can long jump very high and you can see that I'm landing and I have four seconds left. So I saved like two seconds on that engagement. Um, you can also just... How high you aim also has a... Uh, that basically you got two factors that factor into your um, jumps. The first one is whether you are holding W, S or no key. The second one is where you're aiming because the higher you aim, 
the further up you go, right? And the third one is how much you move during the jump, because you can jump, you can jump and then just hold back. Or you can jump and hold forward and go even further, right? So that's the general idea of you can correct yourself a lot. Um, but there's basically like nine different types of jump you can do with Monkey. Like short jump, um, and to all of them you can also add the bounce at the end. But like short jump by holding S all the time and then looking low. Like a strong but mid jump by going a little higher and also landing, right? And I was on the S key doing that one. Um, just a normal jump, you can look low and get over there. Or just, and again, a normal jump, not using anything but the jump key. Looking up, you can go a little further, right? Just a little bit, but can change the direction. Also, again, my, it uh, takes longer to get there, which may be good or maybe bad, depending on your situation. If you want to engage in someone real fast because you are 1 HP, it's short jump right at them. But the idea is that you can practice and um, get to the right distance with Monkey several different ways. You just need to practice it. So you stop like over jumping to just hold this at the S key when you jump, if you're going to over jump. Okay, and then they cap, and then we attack. That's just a side thing, so that you can maybe land a little better, because there are, like, again, like, three different factors onto how you land and how far you jump. Um, but that's just a side thing that you could practice mechanically. The thing I'm most concerned about is definitely your idea of how to play Monkey. Again, it's a very team-focused tank, and what you want to do is jump in, not at the front line, at the back line, and survive. Survive for as long as survive, survive uh, for as long as you can. Do as much cliff damage as you can. Take as many resources as you can. Again, Saria bubbles will help you. Your own bubbles will help you. Shield dance a little bit. And the longer you stay, the more time your DPS have. And then just jump out. You don't need to overstay your welcome either. Like when you're at like 300 HP, you can be like, "Fuck this, I'm out." Okay. So we're gonna jump in. Sarah should bubble you. You should have jumped in already. Your Sarah actually already bubbled you, thinking you were not gonna jump in. Why do you do this? <laughs> like, I, I thought you were actually doing the right thing here. Wait for your Saria, make sure your team is ready to go. Right? But you should just do this. Jump immediately. The longer you stay in the open, the more damage you take before you can jump in. Like, why do this? You are losing health. Which is just really, really bad. And you also wasted your Sarah bubble by doing that. Like, you are now jumping into a Bastion without your Sarah bubble. You use your own bubble, and it's actually really good positioning. Um, but you just got to... I, I honestly thought you were gonna die. That's a really good drop. But still, like, how much time did you buy? You bought, like, one second, right? With everything. And you can't jump in again. Like, don't jump in again, because you don't have your own bubble. You're just gonna get deleted. You jump in again, and this is going to be close. I would not be surprised if you die unless you get the Sarah bubble. The is actually rotating, so you're not going to get the Sarah bubble. Um, Bastion gets distracted, so you don't die. But you could have died there. And you jump to Bastion again. Bastion is not your best target. Like, between the fact that Bastion's got armor, so again, you only do like... Uh, it's not... Uh, it used to be half... I think now it's like 70%, so you do like 40 damage to Bastion. But 40 damage per second is not a lot, right? And again, you can throw medicine for Bastion, but depends on the enemy. Like, you should still be going for Anna Baptiste. You, at least, should be trying to get Anna Baptiste while staying alive. Uh, because you are not enough to pressure Bastion. Let your DPS pressure Bastion. If you go further and the Bastion is focused on you, your DPS can pressure Bastion. If you are like D.Va or Sigma, you could do more about Bastion yourself. But with Monkey, you just want, don't want to be at the Bastion's mercy. Yeah, and again, you don't have a lot of staying power with this. <coughs> you keep jumping. I think you're just off time with your Saria. Uh, you keep jumping in, not getting the bubble. Like, are you gonna get... Sorry. Are you gonna get the bubble this time? You do not get the bubble, so you bubble yourself, and you're just dead. 
Like the amount of time you're actually creating is zero or one second at most because you're just jumping the passion. Don't jump the passion. Jump something else and the passion is going to shoot you anyway. I can almost guarantee that the passion is going to shoot you anyway because you're like the big tank playing near him. Mine is going to be even more difficult to play into a passion, by the way, because you've got no mobility. So unless the passion just doesn't realize you're coming, um, that's actually really good from Memoria. And your Saria. Like, your Saria got grabbed before you got Primal. That's how little value you were getting. You miss. I'm not gonna go too deep into your Rhyme play because you said you only play Rhyme for like one point. Uh, but you're very likely, like, that's a really good mana. You're very likely to just get deleted without a Lucio. Good counter, man. Okay, now we just win. Like, their Passion dies and they get off Passion. And your Sara kills 3 and then you just have cleanup, which is really good. But I also think you could have gotten more done with Monkey than with Ryan. They, your team just clashed that pretty hard. And then Ryan is like really good for cleanup. A lot of health, shield, hammer. Like, still, the fact that you charge Shatter in a shorter amount of time that it took you to not charge Primal is really telling off. How you were just not playing monkey correctly, you're just jumping at their bastion. That's not what you want to do. You don't do enough damage, you have no damage reduction, and your shield gets deleted in like 1.5 seconds. By bastion alone. You could win, like, now, I'm like, okay, now Ryan's a lot better for second point, right? Because you got to close this distance, so having a good shield is good. Like, an actual high HP shield is good. Uh, you also got a lot of cleave damage, so you can now go at the front line. It's good. Okay, I was gonna say, be really careful because your shield is gonna break. You're lucky it was your Ana. You're not lucky, of course, Ana is also very important. But it could have been you just as easily as it was your Ana. Um, try not to rely on your shield when blocking against High Noon. Because anyone who's in your team counts as a shot, right? And the first shot will break your shot. It always goes from right to left. So the break one, the, the one on you breaks it and then the second one kills your Ana. If your Ana had been a little further to the right, then the Ana would have broken the shot and then you would have died. So be just too long, didn't win, be really careful when you're just hard shielding high noon. Because if everyone in your team is using your shield, no one in your team is using your shield. Good shot, Atha. Looks like a winnable fight. You shouldn't go too aggressive while you're purple, but good shatter anyway. Looks winnable. In fact, looks, looks winnable at least. And again, your DPS are just doing a lot. But we just lose that. Okay, that's unfortunate. Just wait. Why are you rolling through main? Don't roll through main. Engagement is solid, but you went too early. Like, you usually want to touch with 3 seconds left. Not three point, like you actually touch like, like seven. Like look where you go. You're going to touch at six seconds left. You touch at six seconds. You need to touch at three seconds to trigger overtime. You can give your team more time to get set up, right? Like look at your team. Do you think you're ready to go? Because it doesn't look like it to me. Right? And three seconds can be a lot of time, especially for fast moving heroes. Um, and even more so when you have Lucio, so it's like... You don't need to touch right now, you can wait until 3 seconds, even 2 seconds. 3 seconds is the window that will trigger overtime, so if there are 3 seconds left and you touch at like 2.9 or 3 seconds or whatever, you will trigger overtime. 2 seconds is just 1 extra second and it's still guaranteed. 1 second, maybe you will get you know, the, the unlucky, oh I was on the point. You just think it's too early though, like too long didn't read, you just think it's too early. And you just get deleted and... Okay, so that wasn't too bad. I think you got potential. You just need to understand that with Monkey, you are not really capable of getting those fast kills, right? Like, I'm gonna go back to training range. And killing people with Monkey takes a long time in comparison to like everything else. Um, if you just hold left click, it's gonna take like more than three seconds to kill something. Quite literally, it's like three seconds to kill something. Hello, Sebi Gamer. You've got the combo with Monkey, which is like you can land, get a melee in, and then sub them, which is two seconds after you land. 
Um, 120 plus 80. Basically kills them. 50 damage from the landing. 30 damage from a melee. And then the action is the landing, but you, you get rather win than the sapping. But you, basically you're just not doing a lot of damage with monkey. So your job is not killing things. You can help kill, kill things, but you're not the one doing most of the damage, right? You just need to be here and like be really annoying. So that the enemy is forced to look at you instead of looking at your DPS. The bubble also creates a safe area for your DPS. Like your DPS can also play inside the bubble. So that the too long didn't really is just that, uh, yeah. You you just need to be a little bit more uh, thoughtful of what your job actually is. You are not a damage dealer. You don't kill people. You you are just like a very big annoyance on the enemy and be like. Oh. Hello, there's a monkey over here. I'm not gonna go at the monkey. I can try to force the monkey out, but trading damage with the monkey does this is not very good. Um, instead, you should just be trying to focus on, well, I'm going to go in at the rest of the team, put my bubble down. Um, if you have like a Saga or a Diva, you can't wait till your bubble too, but put your bubble down, like distract the enemy, do as much damage as I can, and when I go low HP, I just jump out. And all that time you created for your Tracer, for your Doomfist, for whatever DPS you have, is free time that your team gets to do damage, right? Because, like I said, like it takes you like over three seconds to kill something as um, monkey. But if I just go try to, it's like half a clip. Please respawn. Oh, it went over there. Uh, but it's like, are you full health? Yeah, literally less than a second to kill. Half a second will kill a squishy with tracer. That's how OP she is. You can kill two people. I missed a couple shots, but. You can kill two people with a single clip if you're good enough on Tracer. It's 480 damage per second if you get headshots. Um, but yeah, it's just basically... Tracer can do all the damage you cannot do, but Tracer doesn't stay as long. Uh, yeah, I'll do yours next. Tracer doesn't stay as long. Tracer's just like, oh, I need to go in, do damage and get out. But if you have a bubble right here, Tracer can be like, oh, I just do damage from the other side of the bubble, right? But yeah, too long didn't read. Just, just make sure you are staying as long as you can. Don't jump in. Don't jump out too early. And keep in mind that you are a team player with monkey, so you need to engage where your team can also get value. Even if it's just for to heal you, right? If you have an Anna, Anna needs to heal you to get value. And if you're just jumping out of line of sight, you are not getting value. Anywho, let's take a three-minute break and then we'll do savvy gamers. I'll be right back, shot. <laughs> 